that's how we start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's quite reasonable. <laughs> oh, this episode was just like, oh, we spoke, like you and me just talked about it, Mitch, but like hmm. starting off, it was like, and even that's where I started off. I was like, the only happy moment that happened was like with Dan and Grogu at the beginning. And just like, yeah, yeah I spoke about it in my reaction. Just like it flashed back to all the like development like that's happened between Grogu and Din. And like, it was so emotional to watch. And then the title card came up and yeah. then everyone was like, oh shit, shit's going down. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, I wasn't expecting them to go this hard this quickly, but I guess mm. we're in the final three episodes they kind of have to, um, especially like with the, the, the thumbnail for the episode. And I thought, oh, so he goes back to Navarro to talk to, Grief and Kara, cool. It's like, no, no straight to Typhon. So, oh, okay. Yeah. I was expecting that. I mean, like, seriously, I was thinking that was going to be, like, the main plot line for the next season of getting to Typhon. Yeah. Like, I, I had no idea they were going to just, like... I thought that down. it would be, like, the final episode in the season, at yeah. least. Like, either it's, like, we're going to Typhon or we're on Typhon, or this episode would have been the final episode. But I'm so surprised it happened so quickly, mm. and I was just like, why? The, I was expecting... Like, I, f I figured, okay, we're hanging Typhon's story, some, some stuff's gonna happen, but I wasn't expecting just out of nowhere. It's like, oh yeah, now Boba's here. It's like, oh, okay. That was uh, that was as unexpected. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the inclusion of Boba and Fennec in this episode was unexpected, but extremely welcome. Like, I, I, oh, I yes. was genuinely starting to agree with like what people were sort of saying that Boba's might've only been in the first episode and that was it. And I was thinking, okay, he's probably not gonna come back. If he does, it'll be next season. Mm. I wasn't expecting that he just turns up you know, this episode and is now going to be a major character in the next, um, you know, the next two episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's going to be yeah. interesting what they do. And mm. I mean, there's so much stuff that they could do, especially with like Din and, um, and Boba. There's so much stuff that can be developed there as two Mandalorians. Um, but it was such a shock. Like, I just didn't mm. expect it. And again, like, you and me, Alex, we spoke about it last week. We were just like, what if Boba actually doesn't come back this season? And then we were saying, like, maybe the, the, the Boba Fett show is just going to go ahead and he's not going to be in this and stuff. But you were right on a lot of stuff for this episode, Alex. Yeah, I was thinking, like, they've, I mean, come on, they've introduced Boba. Like, come on, this is, please, please be the show where, please don't be the show where they just introduce a character, tease them, and then, like, just not do it. Oh, I was so nervous yeah. about that. Yeah. I'd say, like, it's one of those situations of, like, I was just, like, expect... It's like, you know, this is what I was hoping for. I was expecting that, yeah, it's probably actually going to be something like this, and then they delivered something like this. Yeah. Because it's like... I yeah, thought, definitely. All right, Boba's going to turn up in, like, one other episode. He'll be, like, working for Gideon or something, because he's Boba Fett. He's a bad guy. <laughs> but then, you know... Yeah. But, like, actually having him come along and be an ally as well, I thought, oh, all right, okay, that's even cool. That's even yeah, cool. like, we yeah. didn't expect him to be an ally. All Like, all three of yeah. us were saying he's probably going to be, like, an anti-hero in this yeah. season. Maybe turn a new leaf in the next season, but nah, mm. he's just straight away on Din's side. Mm. So that was nice to see. It was a good, it was a good yeah. surprise. I liked that. Also, t tomorrow's just totally bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so yeah. badass. Yeah. It's... It, it's it's so cool especially like this is you know i think we mentioned that like uh, in the first episode where we appear this is we've never seen him as boba fett he's he's only yeah. ever done voiceover for boba he's never actually like played boba mm -hmm. and so you're yeah, actually seeing him as boba finally you know that it, it, it definitely delivered oh definitely and even i got chills i wrote the quote down because i wanted to remember but like he says like i'm a simple man making his way through the galaxy like my father before me and i was like Jesus Christ, yeah. so many chills and just yeah, throwback. Yeah, I I was I wasn't expecting Django to just be mentioned like yeah, by name as well. At all. You know. Um just the fact of like sort of showing Django as being like a major like very you know, Django as being very important, you know. Um and also I did really like the touch of like, you know, so always been like uh debated from stuff in legends compared to stuff in canons like sort of is is was Django a Mandalorian or he just wear Mandalorian armor and I like the very sort of thing that no he's just same as Din he what he's not a born Mandalorian but he's been raised Mandalorian mm. and I it's always sort of said that he's sort of always considered like a disgraced Mandalorian Django so I was wondering like it's either he just broke away from him or maybe he took the creed and he broke it by taking his helmet off and like he's just he he could have broken, or it could just be that he just like broke away from them. But yeah, it did. It, but I did. I do like the idea that yeah, Django's a foundling, and then straight away like the Din just accepts that. Oh yeah, no, he is. Boba is the rightful owner of the armor. Um, Fennec Shand, 
and I'm yeah yes so so glad that fennec came back she's i'm like, so glad she's like yeah. mingna wen is such an amazing actress so i was like yeah and I wanted more reoccurring, like, characters. So when mm. I saw her, I was like, oh, thank yeah. God. Mm. Yes. It's like, I mean, yeah, the first episode that she was in in the first season, it's like, okay, I've, all right. All right, come on. It's like, I know she died at the end, but you don't introduce <laughs> friggin' Mulan and have exactly. her killed off in the same episode. It's like, come on, she has to come back. Please. Yeah. yeah, so of course they had a plan, thank God. Yeah, so I, that was uh, good. Yeah, just like, <laughs> just super hyped this episode. I just was giggling and grinning all the way through. Yeah, it just, it was a very hype episode. And going back to Boba, because mm, just yeah. Boba was like, just seeing him. As well, even with the, um, the Tuscan. Yeah. I, I yeah, don't know what it's called. Yeah, I don't want to say it wrong. Because <laughs> someone came for me on my channel. I was like, oh, yeah. fuck. Okay, sorry. Because I called it a stick. Um, yeah. But it's yeah, stick. just called see... a gaffy stick. It's yeah, stick. but um, just like. It was so cool to see like the difference, like you know, him fighting like mm. that first part. Then there's the break, and then he comes back with the armor, yeah. and he's yeah. just full fledged, just fighting. I was just like, oh, <laughs> just like, just, oh, it was so good. That's the great point I saw someone make about. They said how um, the way that Cobb uses <clears throat> he uses the armor was like kind of the same way that Dean uses it, but not quite as experienced. Of like he's so sort of, like it's just using it as armor first and foremost being the main thing and then just sort of like using it as like a um like a what's the word um like a crutch to assist with like you know i don't have to use cover as much mm. i can mm, like, be more yeah. proactive in my shooting and that sort of thing it's probably just use it like a weapon like you know yeah. it's showing like yeah. he comes in and like okay yeah this is armor that he's worn almost his whole life this is armor that like he knows you know how to use and he knows all the little secret tricks that are hidden within it you know and, yeah, like, he's just a he's just a living weapon when he's wearing it. Yeah, so that's why I just like yeah. every like, and even I was gonna say like, even with um, like Roberta Rodriguez's like directing, it was so good this episode, especially with the fight scenes. They were just so unique and different. Like the different angles, there were like lots of close ups mm. and a lot of lower angles, and just mm. that that really like I just connected to that straight away. I was like, that's so good, oh, totally. and just yeah. like, yeah, just. I don't know, just Boba in general just did this episode was amazing. I just loved seeing yeah. him. A little bit more in deep into like sort of like the the more like the emotional heart of the mm. season. So like going like, oh, yeah. into, like this is all the really big emotional stuff. I like that like we had this episode is just like, this is just the, all right, let's just have fun. We were like this is just like, this is just yeah. going to be an hour, half an hour of fun. Mm. You know, just to like, just as like a little bit of a palate cleanser before next week. Right. Yeah, I think next week is the deep end with a lot of emotions, mm. and I think we're going to see a lot more of like um, Moff Gideon's like plans come more like not unravel, but like into motion um, yeah. and stuff with the kid, etc. Um, yeah, so <laughs> but I'm already crying in this episode. So imagine me next week if there's anything <laughs> emotional, I'm going to be wrecked. Mm. Yeah, I, it occurred to me, uh, you know, it's theorized that you know, and what's pretty certain we've sort of had stuff already sort of set up about you know what they want to do with the, the kid is involving you know genetics and that sort of thing and using his blood and presumably cloning and then probably you know wanting to work towards cloning palpatine that's the main only main thing in the moment of star wars universe to do of cloning mm. the empire would be up to you know yeah. so it makes sense to be up to and with um the doctor having like symbol it sort of looks like it's got a bit of kaminoan symbol and that sort of thing that's where it's sort of the main idea of the cloning from that sort of thing um it did occur to me and the clones in the tank and what with well. boba joining yeah. Yeah, and what with and what with Boba joining them, it did occur to me that what if where Gideon's headed, where they track him down to, what if they head back to Kamino, and the <gasps> final battle for everything's happening on Kamino. And it occurred to me, it's probably not a well-known location, especially like we're having entire clones. It's probably gonna be like, you know, they track down the light crew, saying it, it hyperspace is away, saying, and they all say like, you know, you know, that their trajectory sends them out into uncharted space. Like there's nothing out there. We don't know where we're going. And Boba says, I know where they're going. Like, because he he know he know he's he, he's probably the only one in the group that knows what Camino is, and knows where it is. Yeah, that's where yeah, it was yeah, raised. Yeah. yeah, and so he so. probably is probably Bo's probably going to lead them to Camino, where they're Oof, hiding. That out. will be powerful. Yeah, I I, yeah. I think I, the main reason I thought of that it's like there's no evidence or anything. It's the fact that well, it seems like we want to do you know genetic stuff and cloning stuff for the kid. It could make sense to him back to Camino, but also the fact that they have Boba with them and have that moment of like he's hasn't been back here since yeah. like Attack of the Clones. Like he's probably and he's the only one in the group that would know where it is and how to find it. Mm. You know, so it would make sense to to it makes it makes sense to be an interesting thing to have him there 
to help them mm. track them down because he knows where Kamino is compared to the others. Yeah, and I feel like even just in, had, sub, yeah. in, in yeah. subject matter, I feel like that would just mirror, you know, the Republic with the clones and then the Empire yeah. with the clones. So, like, I feel like that's yeah. cool to show that as well. Yeah. As well, it's, um, like, we're at that sort of stage in the story where, okay, we've we've got the villain, we've in been introduced to the villain, we've been introduced to the villain's plan, we have yet to see the villain's lair. Mm. And, you know, we need to see a lair, yeah. we need to see a home world or somewhere. I know there was yeah. lots of people theorizing that Gideon operates out of Mandalore. And I was thinking, yeah, that, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. We're definitely going to see Mandalore in the show at some point. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, at one that'll point. Be like a next, that'll be like a next season mm. thing, I reckon. That'll be like, well, because, like, we won't we won't just go to Mandalore just as part of the story. It's like, that'll be when we're, like, getting into mm. the exploring more about Bo and everything that's going to happen. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I feel like yeah. they, they introduced that, like in like little like drops obviously with bo like episode but i feel like if we are going to her world i feel that they'll explore that next season or the next season after so that'll be interesting mm. it was um uh so like yeah i was um just gonna say um uh speaking about bo um who do we think is going to be in the team uh um mayfeld and, mm. and... yeah yeah God. I was like, why? Because I did not like him last season, but I was like, okay, fair. Yeah. So, all right. So, like, all right. So, who we got? Who's the um? So, we got Dan. We got Boba. We got Fennec. We got Mayfeld. We got Kara. Um, Kara. Grief probably. Gonna have, I was gonna, gonna say I don't think Grief's gonna go. Yeah. We got yeah he might not. Yeah. On, yeah. You know. On yeah. Kara. That's fair. Um, Cobb. I reckon Cobb. They're gonna oh, have yeah, to probably go I back Cobb. and get Cobb. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they wouldn't have dropped that thing where they were like, oh, I want to work with you again or stuff that they said in yeah. the first episode. So I think they're definitely going to get him back. Bo's got to be in it. In the final Surely, yeah. Final because... I mean, yeah. I mean, the mm. fact that she yeah. says, like, I want the Darksaber and stuff, like, I feel like if if it's anyone who's going to be on the team, I think she'll definitely be on it. Yeah. But my, th um, I guess the big question is just, like, how will she... And with him because Din doesn't mm. Din knows that Gideon's back, but he doesn't know that she's trying to get the dark saber from Gideon. Yeah, yeah. And but I, I don't. Know, something will happen. They'll find out. Or like maybe they're tracking Gideon at the same time that Din is, and they just end up crossing paths. By the mm. way, it's like oh yeah, maybe because yeah. they have their own ship now. So yeah. maybe they do just cross paths. Oh yeah, they did. They still look at the ATS, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah, like a whole ship battle of like like a. Because Anti and uh, I, and, um, I have another theory that I brought up uh, briefly, Xander earlier. That I bet I just 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 because I bet it'll happen because I got to. Mm -hmm. I bet that there's going to be some sort of ship battle, dogfight, whatever, and Bo is going to use a seismic charge in oh, Slave One, yeah. like an attack of the clones, and he'll be he'll, like no just he'll, he'll, gonna he's going to like destroy that. a light cruiser with it or something, Ooh. you know, because oh, that would yes. be something really cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I do think that it, it could be like, maybe he goes to one of the Mandalorians for help and then, you know, see if like, she, then he's sort of it's revealed to him that she's hunting Gideon down. Mm. I, I don't know. I think that, I think that, yeah, both going to be involved and yeah, my best guess is to, there's gotta be, I, I feel like they're not going to be like on a base. They're not going to be on a, they're not going to be like on a cruiser with a child. They're going to be like, they're going to be on a planet on a base somewhere. And it's probably going to be Camino because that's probably the 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 place where dr Pershing probably is and yeah. where they would be wanting to work on genetic stuff you know with the most security you know again we spoke about this last time but like and we've just spoken about this throughout the whole aftermath series like i hope we get more about gideon just yeah. like his own plans and even just like like even more than just the cloning like what else does he want yeah. like his own personal goals i really want to find that out because we we saw him in this episode and he was terrifying and just mm. like he 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 will go to any means to get what he wants. So, mm. I, I mean, like, I wonder what else he has like in store for himself. So yeah, mm. I would. I'm still holding out hope on this theory, and I would like for something like uh, you you point out that there's like the hollow table in the middle of the bridge mm. um, on the cruiser, and it's probably like a hollow tables. You know they tend to be used like in, like in solo there's a hologram display and that kira uses you know they tend to be there's, there tends to be like a reason for that sort of thing i thought well, maybe something like for 
I would like, if there is someone he contacts, I think there's there's three options. The first option is Palpatine, but that's very unlikely. I don't think, yeah. I don't, I, w- I wouldn't want Palpatine himself to appear mm. in Mando. I like him to, he sort of me- indirectly mentions they're working something, but he doesn't actually appear. Yeah. Another one I thought could be um, Richard E. Grant's character from R- The Rise of Skywalker, um, General Pride, like who was in the First Order and said he served mm. Palpatine back in the, the old wars, something like that. If like he contacts him and he's another member of the first still working on this stuff with Palpatine. Um, that's not a possibility, but I would love if it's something like if he Admiral Sloan, maybe, maybe. Oh. Um, but if, if he contacts someone via the holotable, table, I would love it to be like if it's just like a hooded figure, it's like a hood, so you can tell it's not Palpatine, it's a different sort of looking yeah. hood. And he start and he talks to person, says something, and the guy starts talking, and you hear it. This might be too close to the, the mole scene in Solo, though. So, like, mm. if you hear a voice talking via hologram, and it's very obviously Snoke. So yeah. talking, and then you sort of see him though, but it just it just looks like Andy Circus, and it's like this is not. Oh, but Snoke I would yet. like, even though it's so a cliche in the Star Wars universe, mm. like with the hood, I still would like to see Snoke, like in you know, even we were saying like humanoid, it's probably yeah. a humanoid figure. I would, I, I, I would love yeah. to see him cloaked. I I I'd love something like I would like a song like that like like as a hood up so him talking he's obviously from the voice you can tell it's Snoke and he lowers the hood and it's just Andy Serkis just a human. And since yeah. you're like, and you're like, okay, what's going on here? Mystery box to lead into the next season of, okay, who's this? Exactly. Who is this? Yeah. I'm jumping different topics on different pages that I've written down. <laughs> Why not? Um, with Grogu as well, like we obviously know that he's reached out to someone. So yeah. someone mm. knows like he's out there. So. Yeah. It would, I, uh, you two probably talked about this last week. I think I definitely don't think it'll be. Uh, a lot of people seem to think it'd be Ezra. I don't think it'd be Ezra. Yeah. Think it'd, be, it'd be very boring if, like, Sabine and Ahsoka have been looking for Ezra, like, since the, the war ended, and if he just turns up and comes... Randomly. He's been, he's been, he's been lost to the Unknown Regions, and he just turns up because he sensed the Jedi and then just came back and by, by himself. Mm. Like, exactly. Well, where have you been this whole time if you just come back by yourself, you know? Exactly. When Alex explained that, then I was like, okay, that doesn't make sense, and that wouldn't be right to a yeah. character like Ezra, and even just the thrawn storyline i think some people are theorizing the jedi could come and help the rescue of him i'm not sure if they'll do that it could be a very end of the season sort of thing i wouldn't put i it'd be, it could be considered as cliche and fan service but i wouldn't put it past them if the fury is like potentially being of sebastian stan as luke if there's a shot of like but it's like a sunset somewhere a planet binary sunset playing and sort of his figure so looking out the uh, sun and he sort of turns towards the camera and it's luke no! so that, I, that's like <laughs> also i, I mean, Ever since Alex mm. told me that last week, I was like, oh my fucking god, that actually could work. So now yeah. I'm like hyped if that actually is going to happen. The thing that uh, I was going to say intrigues. Oh, also, yeah, how Sebastian Stan freshly with his much shorter haircut now, like with uh, Winter Soldier. I saw that too, and yeah. I was like, wait, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so now uh, <laughs> I was going to say how, what do you call it? Um, it's the, the one thing that is interesting that I just mentioned about the whole Snoke theory. Is there's a there's a line I was reading the other day. There's this, the Rise of Kylo Ren uh, comic series, which is like set directly after Ben, like, um, pardon me, right after Ben like turns and like him leading up to when he becomes Kylo Ren. The final scene of the comic is him taking his crystal out of his lightsaber, corrupting it, and then putting it back in, ignites the blade, and it's this unstable, like, damaged, like, red blade. Um, and so it's like him just like rising up to be Kylo Ren. One of the first things he does after everything at the Jedi Temple is he goes to meet with Snoke. And Snoke is much as how we see him. He's in a different sort of outfit. He's in like sort of green, green and brown robes. And he's got sort of like helmets. Well, not really helmets. It's like a sort of, I don't know how to describe it. It looks, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's, just a, it's, it's a hat, headdress sort of thing. I mean, and he's sort of joking about how it looks like a wig at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and so he meets with Ben like sort of you know he he embraces ben says i'm glad that you know you came to me like you escaped from the je- the temple that sort of thing and ben sort of looks at him and says snoke look what's look what look what master skywalker did to you like when upon seeing his appearance he says like look what luke look what master skywalker did to you and so just sort of says D- don't worry about it it's fine oh so, so that means snoke could actually look different not like he could, he not could, too different yeah. but maybe like less or straight <laughs> I, I could buy if, if the whole idea that Snoke is not is like m- like multiple different like as we saw like more than one clone body of him on Exegol it's like he's multiple different bodies it's like maybe maybe it's literally like the last time Ben saw him he was a better clone but then that Snoke yeah. died this is the next one and he says what happened to you and he said and it's like it's saying like he said oh Luke attacked me so the next time you see you see me I might look a little bit different but there's nothing <laughs> weird about that I'm just injured yeah. Yeah. you know maybe something like that I don't know but that's just something about like how Snoke didn't always look how he does. Hmm 
in though i assume yeah, no, that was a good pickup though yeah the ben it would mean anything ben would notice if he grew like another an extra four feet or something so i'm pretty sure he's always been like tw- like eight feet tall or something mm. it's just he didn't always look as deformed i guess okay that's interesting so, yeah that's interesting yeah that's good to keep in mind yeah so that's just something I, I do I do really like the idea though of just I would love to see Andy in live action as Snoke. Especially yes. like this is Ever of, since you said that, yeah. like I actually want it to happen. Yeah, and I I think it's another thing of like the whole the theorizing I had about like this the idea of the Sith cultists making an appearance, something like that. I think the idea that I've got now, which I kind of just popped in my head and I think I prefer better, is less that they're like rivaling with the Empire or so sort of like it's 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 an idea that maybe it's not like the Empire knew Palpatine's contingency plan and they're enacting it now as soon as he died. Maybe it's more Palpatine died and then the Sith cult, based on Exegol and everything, they came to the Empire and said, okay, here's your master's plan. We're going to help you enact that. So why should we trust you? They probably demonstrated their force powers, demonstrated their might and said that we're here to help you bring back your master. This is what we've been ordered to do. Help us. We're, help us. We, we're going to show you how to bring back the Emperor and you're going to help us do it. Long live the Empire. Long live the Empire, yeah, and then if sort yeah. of if if yeah. Snoke or wh- whoever is going to be is like the leader of that cult who came to the Empire to assist with this process, and then he's also going to be the one that's the donor, that well not the 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 the, the volunteer that's going to have mm. the experimenting done on him to hopefully, Ooh, you know that that really really like sort of Indiana Jones feelings yeah. about it then of like, yeah. like the sort of it's like because just like I'm just thinking about the idea of like having it almost like because I mean like. Snoke as a person and like as a character and as like you know we still don't entirely know how much free will he had how much he was like sort of to what extent he was controlled by Palpatine yeah and like even if like was he even like just like actually possessed by Palpatine to an extent but just like without realizing yeah. that he is like yeah. well, I'd say the simplest example being like um uh the post credit scene at the end of Thor 1 where um Dr. Selvig goes and talks to Nick Fury about the tesseract mm. oh, but then yeah. you see that loki is just there just, yeah. like, just like echoing the words that he's then saying you know and like he does he is yeah. his own person but yeah i being controlled mm. I, I just imagine the idea of like this sort of lead sith cultist who like they're trying to perform this ritual to like okay i'm going to be imbued with through like this commit kamino and science and imperial technology i'm going to be imbued with the power of a force sensitive being and i'm going to reach out and be you know and yeah, I'm going to become a vessel for you know, I, like the fallen, mm. fallen master. You know? Yeah, I, I really, really interesting vibe about it. I, I fully see so. the plan at this stage and how about how Snoke could come about. Is they're going to try and get this guy for sensitive powers, and then he will be open to Palpatine to take control of him, and mm. Palpatine will use his Connected body as uh, yeah, his body. But I have to make him force sensitive first, or make him strong enough in the force, something like that. That's my. Um, working theory as to what the plan is and that's not going to work it's going to fail maybe pouting connects to him a little bit as i said i would love if that's the case a scene of andy circus as himself andy circus still with his voice ring but playing his character possessed by palpatine and basically andy playing palpatine um and then obviously something goes wrong doesn't work maybe his body can't handle palpatine's spirit and he starts like it doesn't work and they go like well, well we still have a use for him yeah. And then the idea that, and I could buy it then that the way Snoke works, he's not, it's not 100% like Palpatine's one to one controlling him. Just this is a guy that, is, that was loyal to Palpatine beforehand. And Palpatine's now just sort of telling him what to do, mm. that yeah. sort of thing. Though it is, it's still not sure exactly what's going on because there is like, once again, in the, the Kylo Ren comic, there's a scene like when Ben, the moment he's about to like fully give in to the dark side, and there's a scene where like Snoke's talking to him through the force we're seeing like this sort of close-up of snoke as he's talking to him and then slowly we just cut to the next shot and it's close-up of palpatine talking to him instead and it was wasn't snoke talking to him it's palpatine pretending to be snoke talking to him and that's like right the moment ben turns to dark side it's palpatine communicating to him it's worth oh, pointing shit. out in that scene which is about i'd say 10 years before the force awakens that scene yeah yeah that's okay. that you see palpatine like in his body as we see him on exegol like we sort of like to see this sort of decomposed, sort of broken looking version of Palpatine. Dang. So at least 10 years before Rise of Sky, uh, Force Awakens, which is about 15 years after where we're at in Mando, Ooh, so... Palpatine's already, 15 years from where we're at now, Palpatine's body is already so maybe, back. So, so yes. maybe they do succeed with Snoke, but then and they then keep that, trying to make yeah. a body for Palpatine. Yeah, and then they, that leads to they. I, I'd say that the Snoke is the stepping point to Palpatine, but it's still not mm. perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's it's. I'm I'm very unsure about like you know what's. 
I don't know. We'll we'll uh, we'll learn about it. I remember seeing yeah. lots of people we'll when. Find, we'll also find mm -hmm. out in the the beta comics that are coming up over the next. Oh yeah, yeah. There's where there's. Vader's going to Exegol, and we're gonna. Oh yeah, you guys told like, me about yeah. that. Yeah. This is like just before Return of the Jedi, and he's... Vader's going there to find out what's going on. There, yeah, like he's... what what the secrets is Palpatine yeah. up to? What's he doing hmm. here? Oh, because I was gonna say maybe obvious and obviously David's probably working really closely with like different tying yeah. different things together. Yeah. So obviously, season three comes out next year. Obviously, probably yeah. October the same time as this yeah. year. Yeah. So, I'm guessing we'll find out more about that yeah. next season, maybe. Yeah, it's I I do think it'll be interesting to see like where they go with the story. I do remember like when. It was teased that you know there's something about to do with the clones, something to do it could be Snoke, that sort of thing, and everybody talking about that. And I saw a lot of people sort of negative towards the idea and like, oh, I don't want, don't, you know, don't want Snoke, don't want to catch, you know, I don't want anything from sequel trilogy coming into Mando to say his own thing. And I just had the, I've had the whole time now, and I sort of tried to like sort of you know voice this in the comments that tweet. Mm -hmm. It's like sort of thing of like, well, I mean, you know, if there's one thing Star Wars is continually good at. It's retroactively making things good after they come out. Exactly. Like case case in point, uh, you know, uh, the prequels are much more enjoyable and the overall story is much better thanks to Clone Wars now. Exactly. So that's you a know, perfect example. Yeah, and so a lot of people sort of being negative to anything to do with sequels. Well, if there's any, if especially if there's anyone that can make the sequels better and make the overall story feel better, then it's Dave and John. And like as I exactly. said, just us, hopefully it all it all comes true because it's just us theorizing about what could happen mm. with Snoke and Palpatine and the cloning and the Empire never really going away and sort of staying in the shadows the whole time. Just that now already makes me feel better about like the exactly. Rise of Skywalker. And it the same you, thing, yeah. same with me as well, because I remember when the three of us obviously separately watched the movies, mm. we were like, none of this kind of makes sense because there's no connection to the original yeah. story there's no canon that's connecting to it but now that like they're setting the foundation yeah. of it and it's not even heavily it's just like little hints that this is happening so it's like it's obvious that like you know now that we understand that the empire's been it hasn't been quiet this whole time it's been alive and well and still powerful um mm. i feel like it just gives it more depth and it's the same thing yeah. as you said. It's, it's like Clone Wars to the prequel movies. It makes it yeah. ten times better. And I feel like this is as well. Yeah. But it also it also gives way to that other perspective, which is Din. He has no idea what's going on. He has no perspective of what the Jedi really is. Only the fact that the child is one, and obviously Ahsoka, mm. um, doesn't really understand the Force. As we saw this episode, he got thrown back like three times. Um, and then... Yeah, again, it's like a different perspective from the perspective of the people who are being affected by the Empire and the Republic. Yeah. So I think it's I, really well done. Yeah, I, I like we get, I had a little moment of somebody that is aware of them and knows them. I had a little moment when Bobby just sees the crews is like, you know, they're back. Mm. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. They're, like, they're, That's they're, the they're only affirmative around. moment we get you know? from it. So we've had characters from animation turning up in the show with both Bo and Ahsoka, both of them different examples of one of them being a character that's very much based on the voice actor's likeness and then having her play in the live action. And then with Ahsoka, it was like another kind of different situation of like, this is one of the most well-known and well-loved characters from like, our, I'd say, I'd say possibly the most well-known Star Wars character that didn't originate in the films. Yeah. Probably just above Din. I'd say, yeah. Din oh, probably, Ahsoka. yeah. Ahsoka, Besides it, yeah. Like, yeah, anybody who's, like, loves Star Wars but hasn't uh, only really knows the films, it's, like, mm. they're probably the two most famous characters outside yeah. of them. Um, but having, like, a character that big played by in a recast role as well, a different mm. actor, that's, like, that was another big step they had to do, and, like, they did that. And they did it really and so, well. Yeah. And then, um, but then um, we as also had Cobb at the start of the season as the first character originating from a novel to turn up. Mm haven't had a character from a from a game turn up in live mm. action yet but like that's sort of that's just taken as given it's like they all it's like you know it's just it'll literally be the character just like walks off the screen of the game yeah. onto into in, in live action because it's oh yeah definitely full of them. anyway yeah that's, so that's like that's not even an issue to think about really but they haven't had a character from a comic turn up yet mm. yeah. however apparently there's someone that like may have had like a bit of insider info about some of the things they might be doing for season three said that this one character black kasantan who is oh a, yeah, a, so, yeah. A, a wookie bounty hunter. who's that that sounds cool he's a wookie bounty hunter that's like taller than chewy with like jet black fur yeah Ooh. and he's got a I'm massive into it. a massive scar across his face that was given to him by obi-wan on tatooine 
he's in the Obi-Wan show. Oh, he's probably in the Obi-Wan oh, wait, show. Yeah, oh, yeah, Obi-Wan oh, show. Yeah. Okay, never mind. That's not going to be in the Mandalorian. He's probably in the Obi-Wan show. Yeah. Because, like, no, they, yeah. Said he was, they said he was going to be in Mando, and who knows? He could be, but he could be in the Obi-Wan as well. Because, like, he's, he's old. Mm. He's in, like, you know, he's around. Oh, yeah, the, um, he, and he works. Sick, and as, 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 you, as you can see in that, that the left, very left side of the panel, he works with Boba a decent bit. That's <gasps> Boba staying next to him. Oh, wait, hold on. That's from. I'll throw it that's up. from. Ooh. That's from. Uh, one of the Darth Vader comics when uh, right after A New Hope Vader is looking for answers about who Luke is and he knows mm. something about this something about this kid. Vader assists Jabba the Hutt with some stuff on Tatooine and says like in return you'll give me two of your best bounty hunters to you know for a personal ah, personal reasons right yeah. since lied to him leading up to Empire. Ah! So that all happens and yeah Black Sergeant has worked at Boba and worked with Vader and his enemy of the Rebels and everything like that, and his scar is from Obi-Wan. So he could turn up in Obi-Wan show, he could turn up in Mando, either one would mm. work. It would be cool seeing yeah, another Wookiee. Yeah, either one would work. And so... an antagonist Wookiee at that, you know? Yeah, that's why yeah. an antagonist, like, yeah. that's so strange, but it would be so cool to see it. I want to see it now. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, going, I'm backtracking on something, but like, even with Boba, I was surprised with the fact, like, because obviously he is older and stuff, but I was so surprised when, like, he, like, because, like, I was thinking of the movies and, you know, like, he was really young and just, like, um, risky and stuff. But then I was thinking, like, if it was young Boba, and I was talking about this to someone on my Tumblr as well, like, if it was the younger Boba, he would have left, like, after getting his armor. Mm. He would have just, like, gotten on his ship and then just yeah. be gone. He would have disappeared. But instead, I was actually really surprised with the fact that, he, you know, he came back and he fought. And then he even went after the um, dark troopers to try and save the baby. Yeah. So I was like, damn, he's matured a lot. So yeah. again, you... like you both said, with the fact that he might have his own series and probably is going to, mm. I want to see like what happened for him to mature so much. So I'm actually yeah. really excited if, for you, the show. You had a little theory, Xander, that, or a little, just also thing you pointed out that I did agree with, um, pun me, that you said, was it um, how he probably sees a lot of Django in Mando and like was the fact that it's like there's this guy who's just all he cares about is protecting basically his son and his yeah. adoptive son that's sort of it and that's probably like that he probably sort of reminds him of Django oh, in that respect yes. yeah. and so that's another possibility you know that is yeah that actually is true oh that's lovely of so and again I said this before but like I'm excited to see like what he actually talks about to to Din about his mm. own like experience with Mandalorian culture and yeah. even just like with removing the helmet, the practice that he followed, and even with this experience with like the Empire and the Jedi and stuff, I'm excited to see what that like reveals mm. to Din and what Din yeah. does like in the future. Because yeah. again, we did get like a small like small development moments for Din, and you know obviously his culture was kind of like you know it was he had like a cultural shock because he realized like oh he's not part of like Mandalorian culture, he's part of mm. like a watch. So it was like, uh, yeah. but I hope we get more about that in the future. Yeah, so I'll, either in the next episode or future episodes. Yeah, I, I was I was gonna say like, um, didn't really need to let his whole like the thing the creed. He really needs to let that shit go. Like he was prepared <laughs> to get him. He was prepared to get himself and the kid shot just because he wouldn't give this guy back his armor because it goes against the creed. And like, Din, seriously, it doesn't matter. You know, now it like, doesn't matter. And I think he yeah. might learn that in the next two episodes, maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, the helmet doesn't come off. We still haven't seen Pedro yet this season, so I do think that moment mm. needs to happen at some point. To. It's like, I think it, it's like, I, whether it's a contractual thing or something, it's like, yeah, we have to see Pedro's face at least once. Wild theory. Um, mm. So, all right. Mm. Assuming that is the thing of like, yeah, we see his face like oh, just like once each season. Uh, <laughs> but so first season, it's like this sort of big moment of he takes off the helmet in order to have his life saved mm. and like so like mm. just does it just with like just in the company of like you know of an an inorganic being just a machine and then with ig11 and then i thought all right this season i think it's going to be forcibly removed i um, i also so think it will it, it might something. be yeah yeah and then yeah i i think gideon's gonna remove it, it or something voluntarily will be yeah There'll be like I... there'll be a moment when like he's talking to someone and he just like well no no because I think because if it because if it if it's and he takes it off. no because I think if it, if it's forcibly removed he won't put it back on at least not maybe, straight away because yeah. he'll think it's he's maybe broken, yeah he's broken creed he can't put it back on that's how he'll think Good of point. it yeah because mm. even just the fact about that yeah yeah because if, it's... 
I'm sorry. If, you give, if, if Gideon takes the helmet off him, essentially Gideon knows how he's shaming him. Like that's true. Yeah. It's like yeah, the like, from yeah. the you know the way like you know of like the sort of thing like you know he's shaming this. What he's beaten him in combat and shaming him for by taking his helmet off. Now he can't put it back on, and he yeah. knows that. It's an interesting you know? idea as well as just thinking like you can even take it and. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, uh, if we are correct or anything about the dark side of cutting through Beskar, he could even take it and then cut it in half or something. Yeah. Like, um, destroy his helmet. But yeah. Like, but, but like you said, it would be like a more interesting character thing if like he has the helmet, but then yeah, I, 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 back on. I do think it would be, yeah, be more interesting if he has the option to put it back on and he doesn't. Yeah. yeah. I have the thing of, um, um, imagine like the season three poster releasing and of just like, of just Dan standing there helmetless, you know. And like you know, all of the um, the full armor still, but no helmet. If if the poster did, was like was if if he does have a helmet off by Star Season Three, the poster might be something like him back turned to the camera, sort of silhouetted, and, then and you just, see like his yeah. hair, like yeah. but you don't that see, don't see you don't see his face. Yeah. yeah. You know. So it's not too that, direct, that but would, it's like yeah. you just see like the silhouette. Yeah. yeah. And how yeah. it would be like it would then be like the big thing at the end of the arc for that season of like it's like, like have it explore more in the next in the second season in the third season sorry all about like den, den learning more about like what it means to be a mandalorian what it means mm. to like what which what's like you know, just going to mm. like the root of the creed rather than mm. like all of these sort of like all this these different like sort of things like what's the okay learning more about the watch what is it that makes them different from the other mandalorians mm. going to meet other mandalorians what makes them different from what makes their people different from my people what makes mm. you know how are we the same yeah. and how are we different yeah. as well? And then having it be like then final thing of like, yes, I, it is breaking the creed of like, okay, I've taken off the helmet, but that means that like by the creed, I can never wear it again. But, you know, I'm just like, you know, I'm taking a stand here and I'm like, you know, no, it's like for the, yeah, I'm like, helmet goes back on for like, mm. you know, because like, you know, it's like, and then having, yeah. it, then having it after that. And also I think it would be very fitting because not only has he taken the child, he's taken the home that he's known for who knows how yes. long, mm. but he's also taking away the last thing that he has, which is his creed. Yeah. So I feel um, like that would be very like a very cool arc for Din because he's lost everything. And then that starts off again in season three. And then he's trying to regain that. And again, like you said, Alex, himself back up yeah, he's rebuilding back. himself. Yeah. Oh my saber. God, wait, because he yeah. has the spear. What if Gideon spears him? Oh yeah, if he as an alternate thing of like shame, <laughs> if, he, if he if he grabs if he like beats Din down and grabs a spear and then stabs that through the his the best card armor plate or something, <laughs> like if he uses that to like oh god oh no that that, that, that completely scares me okay let's uh, I'm gonna assume the dark saber can't cut through Beskar because mm. Din's probably gonna use a spear to fight Gideon yeah and so if it can cut through Beskar that wouldn't work yeah because I was gonna say if, with it. if it could cut through Beskar Din would be finished in like two to three seconds. Oh, I was also gonna say, I'm not sure if I said it before, but Grogu seems to be getting stronger with the force. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I like the little touch that he does, didn't go down without a fight, you know? Yeah, he was trying. And I, I noticed, I went and rewatched the scene earlier, that when, when Gideon like ignites the dark saber and sort of holds it up to Grogu and he saw, he looks at it and he sort of reached out to it for, for why is he, well, don't, don't reach out towards the blade, but I noticed <laughs> looking back at it, like it's sort of very stable, the blade. Mm. And it's like, it was sort of like just very stable. And then when Grogu reached out, it starts like, so I think he was like trying to grab it and that's when he pulled it away from him. Oh. And like when he pulls it away, then Grogu like so sort of reaching out and then he sort of just falls back down again. So I think he was like trying to grab it off of him or something. And then oh. I also noticed right before they stunned him, he was like looking at Gideon and reaching like towards him, like probably trying to do something to him. And then that's when they stunned him. Yeah. So either, either, I, so I assume if he was doing something, I was just too weak to anything or Gideon was actually like resisting whatever he was trying to do to him and it just wasn't having an effect on him. Oh. Um, it's it's interesting. I I I think that also just yeah, casually that's the first yeah, Duck Saber's first appearance this yeah, season. This season. And just he just casually grabs it and ignites it, you know. Um <laughs> which I think, yeah, hundred percent we're gonna get it get to see him use it next episode oh, yeah. because yeah. you know I mean he's gonna have to use it, he's gonna fight so there's in. Gonna yeah. be, there's gonna be epic lightsaber fight action in this. Exactly. Yeah. I'm oh, excited. Um So predictions? Predictions on next week. I think I said all of mine earlier. Yeah, I said yeah, I, so I thought I said all my thoughts as well, but like, because again, we're going in blind, so yeah. we literally have no idea what's going to happen. Apart from the fact that they're going to yeah. go and um try and get that guy out of prison, May Mayfield. Yeah, Mayfield. Yeah, 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 you know, they didn't even. I realized this week they didn't even leak the name of the episode, which is fantastic. Like <laughs> last one, last time we knew what the episode was called the Jedi. We didn't even know that this. Oh we didn't yeah. Know the name of the episode this time, we knew nothing. 
That's why everyone went in blind, actually. Mm. Like, actually, everybody had no idea what was going to happen. So yeah. if they try and not leak anything for next week, yeah. I'll be impressed. But also, I'm scared because... Yeah. I don't want to cry again. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, every, everybody had, like, like, all of, like, the different insiders and, like, sort of, like, reporters and journalists all had, like, their noses around, okay, let's try and find out everything we can about yeah. this one that Ahsoka's going to be in coming up. Oh, yeah. A few things came out. The title came out. The runtime, you know, like, all that sort of info came out, like, like Monday. The, uh, yeah. Monday after the last episode. Mm. But then this one, it's like, all right, everybody's still talking about that. Everybody's still, like, was just like more focused on like everything from that afterwards and, like, yeah and so because ahsoka was like trendy for like four days oh yeah yeah because it's huge yeah. so yeah it's understandable i've got gotta say like how um how brilliant the a weekly release format is it's like this oh, is the way to go it's so good yeah. fantastic show, this is the way you do it you release it yeah. every week you know you have it it becomes a thing it becomes a routine that you exactly get. So, all right we'll watch it's today we're watching this show you know yeah release it all in one go all the spoilers are out on the internet in one day and Spoiled everybody and people, people would be interested in watching it people are so not in, people are not interested in people not interested in it within a week and it, that's mm, it it's yeah. done this has been going for you know almost seven weeks now yeah yeah coming up and, and it's trending every single yeah. week for at least exactly. four days yeah. so that's big for the show so. exactly yeah and it's like it's, and, and the other thing of like um of like but streaming with a week re weekly release as well it's like it makes it even mm. better for like imagine the sort of thing of like seeing this prolonged hype and like seeing like people will see like their friends talking about this show like week in week out and think yeah i can just like dip in and watch like all of the episodes have been released yeah yeah, yeah it's not it's but not like in time for like the next three or four episodes yeah still it's not on yet you know? it's not like exactly. a t it's not like a tv show where if you miss the initial release you have to wait for a box set or something yeah. you know exactly. it's like you can just dip in straight away and start watching it and you know catch up and the different the difference of mando is that like uh, that's the service you're watching it on anyway yeah so, like you know it's like yeah it's like it's not like you have to go out of your way to like yeah. go and find this one way to rewatch the episodes that you've missed you know it's not like any extra effort than actually watching the show in the first place yeah so you know that's what makes it so work so well i feel mm. but it's like yeah, it's um... it's working so well though. So it's like, yeah. and even the fact with no teasers, like again, like w we say this every week with the teaser thing, because it's just like it's still so shocking that the Star Wars isn't releasing anything for yeah. this show. It's yeah. just so cool, and it's yeah. just like it's just leaving us with a blank s slate and a canvas. And it's just like when we get to the episode, you watch it, and there it is. Like you don't yeah. have any spoilers or anything. It's just there. So exactly, it's like a really good um, what's the word? It's um. It's kind of a really good statement against um, um, against the over marketing of mm. some shows. Yeah. Like some shows and some films can like go a bit overboard in oh, yeah. sort of releasing info to generate hype. And we spoke about this in the yeah. second or third episode. I think it was when Bo turned up and we were talking about the trailer for Mandalorian. It was like there was nothing. It was like yeah. none of this shit was in there. And yet, yeah. like we're coming in here and we're enjoying this season so much because they held that information back. Yeah. So it's like, give us a shitty trailer, give us a good show. It's a mystery box. They gave exactly. us to think about and to theorize about. They showed um, they showed Sasha there and we were thinking, okay, so who's she? Who's she? She seems important. Who is she? Yeah. yeah. They set it up specifically to make everybody think about that because they know that people will. Yeah. And then, yeah. But she's just, she's just a deflect. She's just like, actually, no. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, everyone. So good. The, a lots of people. The trailer came out. Everyone's just like, "Oh, it just looks the same as last season. Doesn't look like it's doing anything special. Look kind of boring." And it's like, obviously, I guess same thing that that John and Dave would have thought. And it's like it's the important thing. It doesn't matter what people think about the trailer because once the first episode goes live, word of mouth will get people watching. It. Exactly. And the fact that you know. Boba was in the first episode, everyone's like, "What?" You know. So, and it's exactly. Like, yeah, people. Like, it's it's the trailer can be boring. It can be boring. It doesn't matter as long as they say. The show, will, the episode, the show will be here. Come watch, and if you go, oh, it doesn't look that interesting. But then, or they'll have all their friends. No, no seriously, go and watch go it. Go and watch it. Exactly. Yeah. Word of mouth. Like, exactly. That's the thing. Like, I feel like it's the other thing that benefits like streaming with a week re release format is um like a um premiere viewer numbers don't matter. Really. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. A TV show. It's like it like two people could watch it on the at the day on the day it releases, mm. and then. But then if they tell their friends, it's like, it's not that. It's like the aggregate viewers. That you just look at the Twitter feed every week. And then, <laughs> and then you see, yeah, Mandalorian, like... Boba, 
Yeah. You see it. It's there. Yeah, you don't yeah. need you um, don't need numbers to know that it's yeah, a good yeah. show. And I think I will say this. I think they probably learned their lesson from maybe the movies, like with yeah. the the way the trailers were represented and stuff, and maybe like the different spoilers that were possibly being shown. So in a way, I guess mm. it's a good lesson for them, mm. but it's also a good lesson for other companies and other TV shows who are making promotional stuff. Also, <laughs> it's like yeah, I feel like they 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 this is like this is this is marketing of a show 101 this is how you do it yeah this is how you do it yeah you let every episode gets to like stand on its own it's like it's sort of it's like the situation of like there's only there's very few films and tv shows that like go into blind and like even like films that like whether it's something that uh, that's brand new or something that like when i haven't seen ages i've like um i've heard something about it i've seen something here and there all the time I'll seek it out myself just because I'm that sort of person. Mm. But I very really get the experience of like getting to go in blind and like yeah. not really know yeah. anything that's going to happen. And like with Mando, it's like, it's almost like... It's literally you know, like, nothing. Like we're just making yeah. theories up and we're just yeah. like, we're hoping we're right, yeah. but also we're ready to be surprised. We've been right about some things, which is making me feel feel yeah. good. Yeah, know? which is good. I'm happy about that too. Yeah. We have so got some things right. Yeah, we have. That's making you feel more confident about some of the theories. Bad. All right. So thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week. And may the force be with you. And this is the way. This, this is, is the way. way. Yay! Finally! Good. <laughs> that's, that's usable. <laughs>